Manchester United beat Forest 2-0 last night, 5-0 in aggregate and are in the final of the Carabao Cup and they could finally be winning a trophy home. A lot of these Manchester United players have never won a trophy and I think it's about time Manchester United win a trophy. We've got to talk about Eric Ten Hag, a significant impact on Manchester United on the pitch but I think the most astounding impact he's had is off the pitch. That dressing room, they're all happy, they're all smiling. Seeing Santos smiling with Tenor there, seeing Rashford, Martial and Sancho all come off the sub bench, happy to play together, happy smiling. You know, last season, Rashford was miserable, had his head down, couldn't smile. That's why he points to his head, because his head's in the right space now, because the dressing room was so bad. Last season, there was fights after fights after fights in training ground. There was a big Mejbri and Tellez fight, the Martial fight with some of the youngsters. There was beef between, I think, Ronaldo and reportedly some of the English players. There was obviously a bit of jealousy that some players were hunting higher than others. And there was a big divide in the dressing room last season where there was kind of, you know, Sancho and Rashford were like kind of mates. And then you had like, you know, Ronaldo was kind of separate. And then it seemed that Maguire was kind of separate. We don't, we don't know the exact dynamic, but... You know, we hear all these stories that addressing was toxic, there was fights, you know, people were unhappy. And I've always said this with Jadon Sancho, I feel like he's like Marcus Rashford. He came to United after he got this abuse in the Euros. And then he goes into the Man United dressing room and they're losing a few games and it goes tits up and Bailly's being toxic and causing shit because he's not playing. Tellers is getting angry because he's not playing. Dean Henderson and Lingard and Pogba reportedly were causing some stuff and leaks. There was leaks 24-7. There was like fights in the dressing room, players didn't get on, you know, people didn't even talk to each other. Like... I remember last season there was a report coming out that half the Man United players don't even like each other and talk to each other unless they have to. You know, Ten Hag completely changed that. He did team meals. He had to get to the stadium four hours before the match and bond without your phone. You know, he did team meals, bond and things to bring the squad together. And there's togetherness and unitedness in the squad. I see Luke Shaw <coughs> and Bruno hugging after the game. So happy. And you see Sancho smiling. And Rashford said that one of the reasons behind his good form is because he's happy to be at United again. Because he wasn't happy coming into training last season, it was toxic when players were complaining that Ragnick made them drive home in the dark. And I didn't I look. I thought I think Ragnick had every right to slander those players because they were awful. But I don't think it helped that Ragnick was basically saying this team is shit, their attitude shit. There was just boils going on last season, and I just think you know to have our worst season in thirty odd years, to have the dresser and be that toxic, and within a couple of months. They all love each other again. They're all happy. They're all talking about all happy they are to be at Manchester United. It's incredible. And I actually want to get into some news and reports about, you know, these players being happy at United, how the dressing room has changed. A bit of an insight into kind of the new dressing room vibe at Manchester United. But first of all, I want to talk about what Ten Hag had to say on Sancho. And Ten Hag said this. It was great to see the love of the fans. They showed Jadon Sancho today. Great comeback. He was smiling and he's been smiling the last few weeks at Carrington. Hope he can continue on this momentum. He will help as a number 10 and also as a winger. And, it, you know, Ten Hag was talking about how Sancho's been smiling a lot this week, smiling at Carrington, and the fans getting behind him really helps. It was also said, um, you know, by Laurie Whitwell that Ten Hag wanted some characters in the dressing room, a source speaking on a condition of anonymity to protect the relationships. And Laurie Whitwell got inside information, you know, that basically when Ten Hag got to United, his first thing he wanted to do was to get some sources, to get some, sorry, characters in the dressing room to improve the dressing room. Because the main problem last year was we had some very average players with too much power and voice in the dressing room, which caused it to be so toxic last season. And I think Ten Hag noticed that right away. And I have to say, you know, one of my favourite characters in the dressing room has got to be Lissandra Martinez. He's a war warrior. He's a butcher. He's a boom. And Lissandra Martinez says the vibe and the atmosphere in the dressing room is really positive and I'm proud we're on a good run. It shows we're on the right road and making progress. And, you know, we're hearing, you know, it's mad that this time last year, there was your, your, your weekly leaks, your weekly leaks. Generally, Man United were leak FC last season. There was generally at least three weeks, three leaks that came out a week. It's a bit of a tongue twister, leak on week. But <clears throat> now all we're getting is the Sandra Martin is coming out saying the vibe and atmosphere is really positive. Ten Hag stopped the leaks after Brentford. There's not been a single leak after Brentford, which is, is absolutely brilliant as well. You know, it's a new happy dressing room. They've gone, as it's put on the thumbnail, they've gone for almost fights and hating each other to love and happiness and wanting to play together. And, you know, I love to see that as a United fan because generally last season, leaks all the time. Ten Hag even looked, spoke about the dressing room himself and Ten Hag says we are looking forward to a busy run of games and I think they have a good spirit and a good move in the dressing room that can cope with that. Ten Hag was asked about all the games coming up, you know, rotating, all of that. Some players may have been frustrated, they're playing less than others. And he said they're a happy dressing room, good spirit, good fight and they can cope with that. You wouldn't even have said that last year. You wouldn't even want near that last year. And Ten Hag even spoke about Luke Shaw being one of the dressing room leaders saying He's an example of how to win big games. I'm really happy with his development. I think it's been huge, either at centre-half or left-back. He's a great player, full of uh, great personality and great for the 
uh, dressing room and Luke Shaw's coming off as a leader and I'm sure that Luke Shaw is a great character in the dressing room but it's funny how last season Luke Shaw was painted out as like not liking anyone and this season with Din told he's, he's a great character with the dressing room like the whole just character change as well like we know Castamira and Leech are good dressing room characters we always know Bruno had that captain mentality in him but we hear stuff about Luke Shaw other players really stepping up and Tenog says when you were a Man United player you have to match standards referring to you know there's got to be standards in the dressing room and there's got to be and high standards in the dressing room. And then Tom Heaton said after the match yesterday that there's really good um, atmosphere at Man United at the minute. I think there's a lot of momentum at the minute and that's been a key word here. And he said making Old Trafford an old fortress again. But Tom Heaton then followed up by saying that Eric Tenog has set boundaries on what is acceptable and what isn't and has been very clear as players you respond to that. The football ideas he's got across have been good. It's important we keep it up. So sort of talking about, you know, how Eric Tenog has put boundaries, what's acceptable, what's not been very strict with them, which has really kind of brought the good atmosphere and discipline to the dressing room and how it's changed. And, and that's Tom Heaton on that. I remember last season as well, like, well, not even last season, like in November, we were hearing, you know, reports that from James Ducker, another source said the dressing room was not allowing Ronaldo tantrums to distract them and claim the players were moving on. You know, even when the Ronaldo shit went down, you know, a lot of other situations, a lot of other managers, players were decided with Ronaldo because he's Ronaldo. And they didn't, and they just ignored it. And they went, he's having a tantrum. We side with Tenog. We're not going to turn on the manager. You know, Tenog managed to get the respect of those players. They're not turning on, on him. He, they have that Ronaldo situation, and they still didn't turn on Tenog. And I have to say, it's so happy to see the United players happy. Sancho smiling again, happy in training. Rashford happy when it was miserable last season. But you have to give Tenog credit for just absolutely transforming the dressing room. And in the second part of this video, I want to talk about five things we learned versus Forest. I'm going to talk about five things quickly we learned from the Forest game um, because I want to talk about Sancho again and that is number one Tenag was playing Sancho as a 10. Tenag wants to take some risks he wants to try Sancho as a 10 he also tried Victor Lindelof as a DM you know I like that I like that I think he knows that Bruno's the only 10 we've got with Ericsson and Donny's injury he's trying Sancho at 10 I thought Sancho was decent I still think Sancho's a right winger but I like that he's trying to experiment with Sancho as a 10 because he did that for Dortmund, try out new things, try new things in the midfield. I always like that Eric Tenog likes versatile players and likes to try kind of new things. Um, also, second thing we learned is he does not rotate a lot. He does not rotate a lot because he wants to win everything. He wants to go strong. He wants to win every game. He wants to build a momentum. He wants to go all out win. And I think, you know, some people see that as a negative. Some people see that as positive. I do think I would have liked to see more rotation. However, I can justify his rotation because... A lot of the players that played today, like Lissandra and Varane, so yesterday, didn't actually play for a week before that. Luke Shaw didn't play for a week before that. You know, they've all been rested. The only players that are regularly playing that I maybe would have rested was someone like Bruno, but you can't rest him, and Casemiro, but you can't rest him because we've got Tom and I so injured. We couldn't register the bits out, and Ericsson and Donny are out injured, so you had to play that midfield three, unless you want to chuck Kobe Maynard in the deep end, which, to be fair, I don't think would be totally fair. So I think that Tenog doesn't rotate a lot, but I think it's kind of understandable. But we did have some good depth on the bench. Uh, the third thing I want to talk about is what Tenog said. He said we need more pace in the first half. What I love about Tenong is he won that game 2-0 and he said, but in that first half, it was not good enough. We were in control of the game, we were dominant, and we were in control of the game, we were dominant. But there was not, not that pace to attack, not that intensity. And Tenong wants his players to be on that intense tempo, pace to attack, 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 attack. We're in control, we're playing that with 3-0 up and we're in control, we're in balance. But just because we're 3-0 up, let's still keep that intensity, let's still keep that pace, let's still go at them. And I think that's the one negative that, you know, we kind of were in second gear. And I'm assuming that's because we were 3-0 up on aggregate, so we didn't need to go into third gear. But if we go like that to Palace, it would make it a bit more difficult to stay in second gear the whole game as well. I have to say, though, the fourth thing we learned is it was a dominant performance and Ten Hag is making us play good football. You know, it was, it was really nice, like it was a boring game, but like in the second half when the, when the subs came on and everything, you know, it was nice to watch. Like, it's good football. It's dominant football. You know, Pat, you know, Forrest were being boring and parking the bus, but we're getting the ball, we're keeping possession, we're passing it around. It's good football. It's exciting football. Like, I think that, you know, although it wasn't the most exciting game, Tenor makes us play good football, makes us play attacking football, and we're just dominating the game start to finish. You know, there wasn't really, you know, a point where I thought Forrest were ever going to get into this game. You know, we're making Old Trafford a fortress. And the fifth and final thing is, I actually think we have good depth when everyone's fit in attack. Um, not midfield, um, and in defence it's fine. But, but, you know, when everyone's fit, you can bring Sancho, Martial and Rashford off the bench and do that. You've also got Palestri, Garnacho, Wout Weghurst. Like, we've, like, when everyone's fit, there's some depth. There's some good players there. And, you know, it's a shame that that is. And I, you can't believe it. That's the first time Sancho, Martial and Rashford have played together since pre-season because of injuries, because of 
how fluctuated it's been. And you've got to give Tenal credit that he's not even had the front three that he worked with in pre-season that was going to be his main front three at all this season. At all. And he's still got us in a good position in the cup final and very, very well in for top four. You know, and he's not actually had that many players about it to him. And if Marshall can stay fit and these players can stay fit, we've actually got good attacking options because I think, you know, without Rashford, we struggled to score goals. We saw that game stay. But hopefully Martial and Sancho will start getting the goals. Anthony Garnacho will start getting the goals as well. And I have to say one more thing. Leach and Varane have 16 clean sheets and 33 starts as well. So, um, 33 appearances together in all competitions. So, as well, defence is doing pretty solid. That back two is, is very solid. But that's the five things we learned, plus talking about how Tenol's kind of changed and transformed that Manchester United dressing room. Smash a like, smash a subscribe. Subscribe down below if you're new. There will be a video tonight if any news comes out. If not, I'll see you tomorrow in my live stream. Thank you for watching. Bye.